Hello, brothers and sisters. This is Kevin Cosby at home in Louisville, Kentucky, uh, pastor of St. Stephen Baptist Church with another powerful point to ponder as we spend meaningful moments with the master. Thank you for joining me today. As we continue what we started yesterday, and that is don't waste your pain. Uh, and what we discovered yesterday is that God did not put the vitamins in the Reese cups, and God didn't put the vitamins and the nutrients in the uh, Snickers bars and in the, the uh, Dairy Queen blizzards. My, instead, God put the vitamins in the spinach, the things that maybe it does not taste the best are often the things that are the best for us. Um, wouldn't it be wonderful if we could just eat all the candy we wanted, lay around, and that's how you lose weight? No, it's only when you eat right and work out, even when you don't feel like it, that it's painful, it's difficult, it takes discipline, but those are the best things for us. And just like God puts vitamins in spinach, sometimes God puts vitamins in our pain and God will put the pain, allow the pain to be put on our plate and say, I know it maybe doesn't taste good, but eat it. Don't, don't waste it. Don't take what I've put on your plate and, and throw it away in the garbage can. Eat it, take it. It's vitamins, it's nutrients. It's going to help you grow. And what we discovered yesterday is that God wants us to profit from our problems learn from our losses, advance from adversity, and gain from our pain. Now, anyone who says to you or any preacher or any quote unquote um, biblical authority who says to you that when you become a Christian, you no longer have pain and troubles, uh, dismiss that person as an unsound, unprincipled, unrealistic, not living in the real world person. The fact of the matter is in life, you will have pain and being a Christian does not exempt you from the pain of life. To tell someone that becoming a Christian exempts them from the pains of life uh, often uh, leads to disappointment because when pain comes, then they get angry with God and say, God, why did you allow me to have this pain? Uh, and God says, well, who told you you were not going to have pain? And then you get mad at God because you're holding God to promises God never made. Jesus had pain. I could chronicle the pain of Jesus from the time he was born when there was a contract on his life at birth. And the first family, Joseph and Mary, had to take refuge in Egypt by God, to the time he died, when he died as a result of a lynching. Jesus was lynched. Jesus was George Floyd. Jesus was Emmett Till. He was lynched. That's what happened to him. He was betrayed. He was rejected. He was denied. He experienced the pain and the vicissitudes of life. And we've been looking at the Apostle Paul uh, in 2 Corinthians. Paul says in 2 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 8, he says, we don't want you in the dark, friends, about the hard, how hard it was when all this came down on us in Asia province. It was so bad, we didn't think we were going to make it. You ever felt like that? I can't make it. We felt like we've been sent to death row. That is, that is, was, that is, was all over for us. As it turned out, it was the best thing. Uh-oh, it was the best thing that could have happened. In other words, he didn't waste the pain. He profited from the pain. Uh, he, he, he advanced because of the adversity. He says, we thought it was all over, but it, we, it turned out that that was the best thing that could have happened. Instead of trusting in our own strength, our wits to get out of it, we were forced to trust God totally. Not a bad idea since he's the one who raises the dead. He did it, rescued us from certain doom, and he'll do it again, rescuing us as many times 
as we need rescuing. The key thing is that Paul experienced, and he doesn't specify what it was, but Paul experiences some pain that was so devastating to him that Paul didn't think that he was going to escape. But he ends up saying it was the best thing that happened to us. Uh, the best thing that happened to us. Um, one of the biggest obstacles to, in, to advancing in our adversity and gaining from our pain and learning from our losses is how our memory short circuits, how we often forget how God brought us through the pain in the past. We forget how God helped us get through. Why is it that we write um, in the sand how God got us through? So when the wind blows, uh, it's erased or blown away. But we carve in concrete all of the bad things that happened to us in our life. So that it is something permanent that we just cannot seem to forget. But when it comes to how God had delivered, delivered us, um, we, we write that in the sand, wind blows it, and we forget the pain. Would you look again at this scripture that we just read, 2 Corinthians chapter 8, and look, if you will, at verse 10. He says, uh, we felt like we were on death row, and it was all over us. As it turned out, uh, it was the best thing that could have happened. It's, uh, instead of trusting in our own strength, our wits to get out of it, we were forced to trust God totally. Not a bad idea since he's the God who raises the dead. And he, and he did it. He rescued us from certain doom and he'll do it again, rescuing us as many times as we need rescuing. Stop here. I just want to look at this scripture again. He, he, he rescued us. He's talking about how God rescued us in the past. But then he goes on to anticipate any pain he may have in the future and says he rescued us. He rescued us from certain doom, past tense, and he'll do it again, rescuing us as many times as we need rescuing. So he's saying, so you can, you can stop here. He, he, he said he rescued us and he will do it again. So he's talking about how God did it in the past and that we can anticipate God rescuing us also. But when we are rescued and we come back over, through the pain, we will look back over it and say, you know what, like Paul, it was the best thing that happened to us. I found out that the vitamins was in the spinach. Have there ever been a time in your life, and perhaps this is you right now, right now, you're going through some storm, some pain, some difficulty, something, that's very traumatic, and you're telling yourself, I'm finished. Look, that's what Paul just said, I'm finished, or it's all over, or I will never get through this, or this will never work out. But then God brings you through what you thought you would never get over. And God brings you through what you never thought you would get out of. And God brings you through that which you said will never work out. And as a result, in fact, what you thought was your pain was really your great gain. Now, when I talk about pain, and let me break down pain into its various component parts. Let's just break that word P-A-I-N, P-A-I-N down. Pain means this, problems, P, problems. That's what your pain is. It's problems. A is adversity. Something is against you. You've got adversaries, somebody is against you, something is against you. I is injustice, and then N is neglect. That's what I mean by pain. And God does not want you to waste your problems. God does not want you to waste your ad adversity. God does not want you to waste your injustice. God does not want you to waste the neglect. It, 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 the vitamins are in it. God's going to let it, it's going to put it on your plate. You might not like it, taste it. It's going, to, it's going to help you grow. Whenever you shine your shoes, when you shine your shoes, you hit that shoe and that shoe is saying, why are you hitting me? You must not like me. And you love the shoe, but you keep hitting it. And if the shoe could talk, the shoe would say, why are you hitting me? Why are you hitting me? Why are you hitting me? And you keep hitting that shoe with that brush or with that rag, you keep popping it. 
But then once you put that shoe on, the shoe says, oh, I didn't understand it, but now I know why you were hitting me. You were hitting me because you were bringing out the shine in me. And it took friction to bring out the shine in the shoe. And do you know when usually a great shoe shine person, shoe shine man, shoe shine woman stops hitting the shoe? They usually stop hitting the shoe when they look down at the shoe and they can see their reflection on the shoe. They can look at the shoe and say, I can see myself in that shoe. And sometimes God will keep hitting you with the rag, hitting you with the brush of adversity, slapping you with the rag of pain. And you say, God, why are you going to, why, why do you do this? And when are you going to stop? And God says, as soon as I can see myself reflected in you and my will reflected in you and my purpose reflected in you, that's when I'm going to stop. I'm going to keep buffing, buffering you, buffeting you until I see myself in you. So let me ask you something. Many of you are saying, oh, I'm so disappointed. I'm so disappointed. This disappointment is taking me under. Be careful. How do you know the disappointment is really not an appointment to something greater? By faith, that's what we believe. So that is why we will not waste the pain. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word and Bless your people, especially someone right now who's listening, who has pain, in trouble, has a loss, has some adversity. I pray, O oh Lord, that they will rethink their prayer from how do I get out of it to what can I get out of it. You're getting us ready for something. You're getting ready for us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you so very much for joining me again with another powerful point to ponder. Look, if you don't have a church home, I want to encourage you to get connected. Everybody needs a church home. So contact us, newstart at ssclive.org and um, get a, become a part of the church. If not St. Stephen Church, get, get connected to some church, all right? Peace and blessings to you. Thank you again for joining us. And uh, until we meet again on tomorrow, uh, have a blessed day. But remember always during COVID-19, stay safe, stay sane if you can, stay home. Peace and blessings. I'll see you tomorrow.